In this video, we will learn to understand the trends in the periodic table and how they help us to predict the characteristics of various elements. So first off here we have the group number. Now the group number is our vertical columns and this increases as we go from left to right across our periodic table. And the group number represents our valent electrons. So the electrons that are in the outer shell and the space that the atoms have four valent electrons when reacting chemically as well. This similarity in these characteristics corresponds with their similar chemical and physical properties in each of the groups. So all elements in the same group will exhibit similar chemical and physical properties. Now the period number in the periodic table refers to the horizontal rows and this increases as we go from top to bottom. And the period represents the number of orbitals an, an atom has. So all of period one elements, and here we have hydrogen and helium, they have one orbital. All period two elements have two orbitals. All period three elements have three orbitals and so on. But unlike groups, however, the elements in the same period have very little in common apart from the number of orbitals. They have very different chemical properties and physical properties, which only get more apparent as you move across the period. Like if you were to look at, for example, magnesium and chlorine, they're in the same period, but almost couldn't be any more different from one another, apart from the fact that they have the same number of orbitals. Atomic mass is the mass of an atom in atomic mass units, and the mass is made up of the mass of the protons and neutrons in the nucleus. We don't count the electrons because their mass is so small, it's basically insignificant. Atomic mass increases slightly across a period, but even more significantly down a group. This makes sense as the atomic mass number increases, so does the number of protons and neutrons, and therefore atomic mass increases as well. The melting and boiling point I'm going to talk about together as they sort of go hand in hand. Now the transfer melting and boiling points are a bit complex as there are so many factors that influence the melting and boiling points of elements. So depending on the group, the trends change uh, for these characteristics. So for groups number one and two, the melting and boiling points decrease as you go down the group. This is because as you move down these groups, the atoms get so large that the ionic interactions become harder to form and therefore the forces that are holding them together are weaker. And if it's weaker, then it takes less energy to break them. So that's why they decrease, the melting and boiling point decreases down the group. Now this also happens for groups 13 and 14. The melting and boiling points decrease down the groups. And this is because the further down the group you go, the more orbitals there are, and therefore the more the outer valence electrons are shielded from the nucleus. So the inner orbitals shield the outer ones from the nucleus. And that leads to weaker interactions as well. And so they don't require as much energy to melt or boil. For the transition metals, melting and boiling points generally increase as you move down the group. This is because as you move down the group, the number of unpaired electrons increase. And that makes them available to make more metallic bonds. The more metallic bonds there are, the harder it is to break in order to melt or boil the substance. And that explains why we need more energy and therefore the melting and boiling points increase as you move down the groups. For groups 15, 16 and 17, they tend to increase down the group as well. And this is because as non-metals, as these atoms increase in size, the strength of the intermolecular bonds or van der Waals forces increases. Therefore, we need more energy in order to break those forces, and so the melting and boiling points increase. Now, the next few trends I'm going to talk about are more suitable for senior chemistry students. So if you're in grades 7 to 10, then you can probably pause this video here, um, or you're most welcome to keep watching and deepen your understanding further. Um, so let's jump straight in. The next trend is electronegativity. So electronegativity is the force by which the atom pulls the electron towards itself. If you haven't already watched my previous video on polarity and electronegativity, I'll link it up here in the top right of your screen because um, that's worth watching if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I talk about electronegativity. 
Electronegativity increases as you move towards the top right hand corner of the periodic table with fluorine being the most electronegative element. The electronegativity of an atom is determined by two factors. The first is its atomic number, meaning how many protons it has in its nucleus. The more protons there are in the nucleus, the more of a pull it will have on the electrons orbiting it. This is because opposite charges attract, and so if there's more positive charges, then it will attract the electrons more strongly. The second factor is the distance that the valent electrons are from the nucleus. So this usually refers to how many orbitals there are. The more orbitals or electron shells, the further the valence electrons are from the nucleus. So if we were to draw an arrow to represent the trend of electronegativity across the periodic table, we would draw it from the bottom left all the way up pointing towards the top right, towards the most electronegative element being fluorine. The next trend is atomic radius. So atomic radii is the distance from an atom's nucleus to its outermost electron or electron shell. As you would imagine, this increases down the periodic table as each period adds another orbital. And as we move down the periodic table, we also see an increase in stuff, like there's more protons, there's more neutrons, there's more electrons. So it makes sense that they would therefore need to take up more room or more volume. But why does it decrease across a period? Well, this is because the more electrons in the outer shell, the more electrostatic charge or attraction the outer shell has towards its nucleus. And so it's held closer to the nucleus, therefore taking up less space. For example, magnesium only has two electrons in the outer shell and therefore the nucleus can only pull that shell towards itself with a charge of plus two. But if you look at chlorine, Chlorine has seven in its outer shell, and so the nucleus is pulling it closer with a charge of plus seven. So this makes sense when you think about how much um, easier it is for magnesium to lose two electrons in a chemical reaction than for chlorine to try and lose two. So the trend for atomic radii is that it decreases across the periodic table from left to right, and it increases down the periodic table from top to bottom. The last trend I'm going to talk about here is first ionization energy. So the ionization energy is the energy required for a neutral gaseous atom to lose one of its electrons. This is a measure of how difficult it is to remove that electron and therefore also a measure of how strongly that electron is bound to its atom. The higher the ionization energy, the more difficult it is to remove an electron. Therefore, ionization energy is also an indicator of the reactivity of that atom. The higher the ionization energy, the less reactive it is because the more it wants to hold on to the electrons that it has. So there's two trends apparent here in the periodic table. The first that is that in general, the first ionization energy increases as we go from left to right across a row. The second is that the first ionization energy decreases as we go down a column. So the first trend makes sense as we would expect that the first ionization energy to increase as we go across a row of the periodic table because the electrostatic attraction between the positive nucleus and negative electrons becomes larger as the number of protons increases. So it's pulling more if it's got more protons. The second trend that it decreases down a group that's due to the fact that the number of orbitals holding the electrons increase as we go down the group. Now this increases the distance from the nucleus to the outer electrons. And that means that it's actually decreasing the electrostatic pull. So although the number of protons in the nucleus is becoming larger, the electrons in the inner shells tend to block the outermost electrons from the force of that nucleus. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you want to use this periodic table yourself, I'll put the link in the description for you. If you like this video, please hit like below and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thank you.